Um, this session is really just to introduce you uh, to the different Geo APIs we have and the few things that changed. And we have a special guest at the end of the session that will present you another way to do the same kind of stuff. So let's start. So as you may know, if you already went on the site code, the google.com, there is a load of APIs for Geo stuff out there. So we have different versions of the Google, Google Maps API in JavaScript, in uh, Flash, and we can have it running on mobile devices as well. And of course, we promote a lot of uh, different applications like Google Earth or the Google Earth API. And uh, there is plenty of stuff out there. Uh, I don't know if you can r read the link that you see at the bottom. It's what we call the playground. So all those APIs are available just to test. It's really easy to run a test case and to see what it brings. So for this session, uh, that's the first session, uh, I will talk about KML and then the JavaScript Maps API, of course, and then a little bit of Earth API and Flash API. So how many of you know what KML is? Great. So you... I uh, hope you won't be too bored. It won't take long anyway. So KML is um, the format we use to describe geographic objects. Uh, so a geographic object can be any kind of feature, a place mark, a zone, a polygon, a line, a 3D model. And all that is described in uh, XML following the KML uh, schema and this KML schema is now an open standard maintained by the Geospatial spatial, uh, Consortium. And uh, you can have a look at that link just to see what it means to build uh, KML. Let me take you there right away. Oops. That's not the one that I wanted. So as you can see, you can define easily place mark with HTML5 content in there. Uh, you can define lines. You can define polygons. And every time uh, th it's the same principle, you just have an XML file describing all that with coordinates. So that's really the basic of Google Earth and KML. It has been around for many years now. And uh, we are quite happy to announce a, a few new uh, features. So, so that's just what I said. Um, you can place any kind of features in a KML file. If it's too big, you zip it. And uh, as we will see in the, in the second session, if you really have a lot of content to put in your KML, you can reference uh, resources on the web, which means that you first load a small KML that will then load the rest of it from the web as needed. <coughs> so let me take you through uh, the very basic example how to create a place mark. So first the header, which is an XML header, then with the reference to the um, and the KML namespace, and then a place mark definition, with, which has a name, and then the description, which can be basic HTML. Um, and you can even extend the schema to add some structured data as well. And of course, the point coordinates where you place that place mark. Uh, of course, if you want to display many place marks, you can use styles. So you can define styles like, let's say that every line I trace will be uh, from that color and that thickness. And if it's a polyline, it's the same. I will use a specific color. So every place mark or every line, every polyline that uses that style, yellow line, green poly, uh, will have the same layout. So it's just like in HTML, you define styles and apply them to the objects. So, uh, with Google Earth, 
which was the first client to be able to read the KML. Uh, the, the latest re release of Google Earth in version 5 uh, had a few improvements on the content you could put in the info bubble. So uh, you can put um, what well, any kind of stuff that you put in HTML, you can put it in an uh, info bubble content in Google Earth. Uh, as you saw, the demo is HTML5, you can use Canvas as well, and uh, you can add a video on some platforms. Uh, we also have the Google Earth API, which makes it possible for you to read KML content in a web page. I'll show you some examples after, after that. So there are a few limitations, which means that if you embed iframes or objects or JavaScript code in your bubbles, uh, it will get ignored by uh, the mashup on the website, uh, by the Earth API, because you, for security reasons, you will have to make specific calls to say that you really are aware that you want an iframe or you want to have an embedded object. And in, HT in Google Maps, there is a kind of support of the basic HTML features. So this means that you, if you create your KML, it may look a little bit different in the three environments, uh, but you still can uh, have the same uh, information in uh, the three environments. So the thing I want to talk about, which is really new, is the KML tool. So up to now, it, it was really easy to have a lot of content on Google Earth, put a lot of placemarks, uh, buildings, roadblocks, etc. But there was no way to really take the user by the hand and make him visit what you wanted to show him. And with the KML tools, it's actually feasible now. So let me show you what it looks like in Google Earth. So this is um, an example of <coughs> excuse me, Al Gore, who made a presentation to explain climate change. Uh, so let me put the sound back. So now I can play like to coal, oil, and gas are changing our climate in ways that pose increasing threats to human well-being in both developing and industrialized nations. We are already experiencing the harmful effects of the climate crisis, and we know that more severe damage lies ahead unless we act quickly. The good news is that we can still avoid the most severe impacts of global warming by reducing our emissions of heat-trapping gases and halting and reversing deforestation. However, as we work to reduce these emissions of global warming pollution, so as you can see, it's quite easy to have a kind of really explanative content. Uh, you can add sound, 3D models, and then take the user by the hand and let him fly around the places you want to show him and explain things. So you can do that with 3D models, of course, and you can also use uh, things like polygons, for instance, uh, to show statistics in a more uh, descriptive way. So this is, for instance, uh, child death rates by country. Uh, so it's quite easy just to have polygons for each country and to have them higher or lower depending on some values. So it's, it's really a nice way to have everything explained. And then, of course, you can drive people through those places and explain things by, uh, with, with some uh, recordings. So what you can do in tools is define controls, uh, movements of the camera, so the people looking at the place can uh, move things around, which means that if you reference uh, the features in Google Earth, then you can send some messages to move those features uh, across the globe. Play sound, change the place marks. And uh, there's one thing we have as well, is uh, we now provide history of imagery, which means uh, we have several versions of uh, all the places on Earth in pictures, and so we can play them one after the other. So that's a nice thing as well. So let's look at a simple tool in XML, in KML. So we have an extension to the KML standard which uh, starts with uh, JX. And that's part of the standard, you can define extensions. So the tool has a name and then we define what we call a playlist with a sequence of fly to orders, which would be 
uh, first go to that place and then fly to another one. Then you have a, a, the way you want to fly there, if you want to jump there or fly them smoothly. And um, the position of the camera. Oops. So the position of the camera, it's you place the viewer, uh, you have the viewer looking at the place on Earth, uh, defining the tilt and the range, how far he is, and uh, uh, the inclination. Then the position is looking at, and then <coughs> a new a new thing we, we entered is that the camera can actually be rolled so that you can look at the sky upside down, etc. Uh, this is basically because uh, we added Google Sky in Google Earth, we added uh, Google Ocean, and we have also Google Mars and uh, Moon. So uh, it makes sense to be able to really look at the sky and then be Google Sky, for instance. And of course, you can add sound just by referencing uh, the MP3 file. And if you want to change the imagery, you have a specific tag as well, which is a timestamp that you want for that specific imagery. So if you want to show Moscow in the 90s, you can just add some specific uh, data over there. And moving a model, it's quite same. You have a, <coughs> if you already loaded an object <coughs> uh, with the reference foo, then you can move and change the location of that object foo uh, just by sending that kind of order. And of course, this can be lasting two seconds or 20 seconds, depending on the speed you want for your animation. <coughs> so as I said, network links makes it possible for you to download first uh, a very basic KML that will then load all the rest of the stuff um, progressively. So. So once you build your KML, what do you want to do with it? You can display, as I said, in Google Maps, in Google Earth, in Google Maps for mobile, which means that if you have a link with a KML and you click on it on your mobile and you have Google Maps for mobile on that mobile, then you will be able to load the KML as well. <coughs> of course, you can display it in Google Earth and on Google Earth API. So. Uh, the other nice thing with KML, as it's uh, XML actually, it's quite easy to get indexed and then uh, the, the content you produce to describe geographic places can get indexed and show up in, maps, in Google Maps results. So in order to be sure to have the right mentions, uh, you can add those two extra tags just to say who the author of that KML is and uh, a link to the website that actually hosts that content. <coughs> you can define sitemaps. I don't know if, how many of you, you know what a sitemap is. So for webmasters, you can submit all the links you want to get indexed and you can do the same with KML content as well. So uh, KML is really HTML for geo stuff. So it's something that you cannot ignore, I guess, because it's really a standard. It's getting more and more used, and it's quite easy to set up, actually. So the Google Earth API, that's the same content as on Google Earth, but embedded in your browser. So you no longer have to install Google Earth on your laptop. You can directly install a light plugin that will play the same content. So a few examples, uh, this one is my favorite. The nice thing with the Earth API is that it's totally JavaScript driven, which means that you have a more f a closer grip on the controls you want to do. And so for instance, you can do uh, interact, oops. Oh drive around. So all that stuff is in JavaScript using the Google Earth plugin. And uh, yeah, and the nice thing is that if you have a specific KML that you already built, you could display it as well in that scene. So it's quite easy to do really, um, why not movies using uh, that uh, Google Earth API and KML. So, of course, when you build a mashup using the Maps API, you can add it 
um, as well as a view. So we may get back to this one after that, afterwards, but the idea is really that when you use the maps API in JavaScript, you build a div and then you populate everything with the maps views. You can then uh, just uh, switch it to the earth view so that the plugin uh, occupies that div and shows the 3D scene of what you were presenting in 2D just before. <coughs> so you just have to uh, create an instance and then uh, you can add more features. So using JavaScript, just the way in, as you do in with the Maps API to add place marks, you could add them as well using the Earth API. And of course, with the Earth API, you can load a KML just the way uh, we did in Google Earth. It's the same KML, it will be displayed the same, and the behavior is uh, really, really similar. So, that was for the 3D version using KML coming from the Google Earth world. And um, now I will have a quite a quick look to the Maps API. So what we call the Maps API is really the JavaScript Maps API, which is the most used uh, API we know of. It has a, a really, really a lot of features you can do. As I said, you can just draw a map as complex as you want to and use uh, different services. Uh, which could be geocoding, reverse geocoding, which, uh, or calculate direction, um, add local search, add layers of data. And um, let's have a look at it. So it's, yeah, there are approximately 150,000 websites using the API uh, in the, on the web. It's supported on the main browsers. And uh, there's quite a lot of people uh, actually uh, using it. So how many of you have tried the Maps API? Great. So I expect the rest of you to start uh, tomorrow. <laughs> so how do you add a map on the page? It's quite simple. You have a div on the HTML page that has a reference, and then you just say to the Maps API that you first you load the library and then you will just populate that div with everything that is coming from the Maps API. So you will add controls, which would be the, the little uh, map and satellite buttons on the top right, and initialize the map using the set center uh, command, which means that you give the longitude and latitude, and from then on, all the tiles are downloaded and you have a maps view. If you switch the maps mode, you can have the earth view or the mixed uh, which is Earth View plus the name of the streets. So, um, the very first version of the Maps API was a specific API that you had to load. Now we have a specific library to load all the JavaScript code on Google. Uh, so that's why we use the Ajax Loader library. So you just load that library first, and then when you're ready, you load the Maps related library. So this makes it possible, for instance, to uh, first uh, display the page, and then if you want to interact with the maps, load more stuff to be able to service that, that maps. Um, so yeah, the, the convention is usually 2.S is the stable version, and 2.X is the experimental version that may break sometimes because we are trying out some stuff. So, the first thing you do usually when you have a map, you center it, you display, you select what you want to display, and then you add a marker. To add a marker, it's quite simple. Uh, you create a marker at a given position, and then everything else is event-driven, which means that you can define the method that you call when someone clicks on that marker. So in that case, the function would be to open a window, just at the place where the marker is, of course. Uh, but you, it could be any kind of stuff. The, the, the main idea is every object has some events and that you can register for those events to be notified when something happens. And then you add that as an overlay to the map. So you can use the place marks, but you can also define your own overlays, which is a little bit more advanced. You can add, of course, you can add lines, so it's uh, the quite the same uh, system which means that you create a line and then you add it as an overlay, which means that that line can be clickable and you can capture the events that happen on the line as well. 
you can create polygons using the same method. And uh, so that's the kind of stuff that you can add on the map. And then there are a few services that are available. The first one is geocoding, which is translating the uh, postal address into longitude and latitude. In order to do that, you just have a geo geocoder client that you, um, that, that you call giving him an address, a postal address, and a callback function that you call when the uh, geocoder is finished and has found something. And uh, so the, 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 the callback function is what you see here. Oops. And what it does, it just creates a marker at the point that you mentioned, giving, because the geocoder returned the longitude and latitude, so it creates a marker at that specific place and adds, um, uh, opens a window to say that's, that's where uh, that location is. Uh, there's something that was missing for a while and that is now available. It's the reverse geocoding. So that's, uh, let's say that I'm flying over one place on a map. I'm flying over a map, I've got no idea where it is. So I can call uh, the uh, geocoder client to have the, the reverse, which would be then what address is that location at. So it's the same call. You just provide the longitude and latitude and it brings you back and it calls back the callback function, providing you with uh, the postal address of the place you're looking at. We also introduced something that can be useful, especially for mobile phones. Uh, it's that all the geocoding services, uh, sometimes you don't want to load uh, JavaScript uh, to have the, the results. And so you can usually uh, just use the get HTTP request uh, on a REST service. So it's the same principle. You provide either the longitude and latitude or the postal address, and you get back some results that can be formatted in XML, JSON, or CSV. And uh, you just get the, the result. So it's really easy for mobile, for instance, or for a server-side geocoding. It's not meant to be used for batch geocoding, but it's meant really to uh, have things uh, made easier for you if you want to process some stuff on the server side. There's one thing that is always a pain, is uh, where do I initialize my map, depending on the visitor. So uh, that's the location detection uh, problem. So you, uh, at the beginning, people were providing uh, hyperlinks so that you could click on your favorite town or things like this, but ideally, uh, it would be to detect automatically uh, the location of the user. So HTML5, as it has been mentioned before in the keynote, now includes uh, location detection, at least uh, on uh, the one the browser supporting it. Uh, Google Gears, which is another uh, product we have that it's a plugin that you can install on any kind of uh, browser, provides you that uh, feature as well using well, everything that is available to really detect where that uh, user could be located. And uh, the JavaScript loading library uh, feature that I mentioned before has that feature built in as well, which means that when you load the library using the Ajax loader, you have a method where you can ask for the user location. So if uh, that library managed to detect the location of the user, then it returns uh, the longitude and latitude. And if not, you have to uh, rely on other, other methods. Uh, another service that we have that is quite uh, useful, it's uh, driving directions. So you just give the starting point, the end point, and then the service just figures out the best route for you. And the nice thing is that you can either have something very um, automatic, like this, you just say load, and uh, this will display all the, the routing information in a div, and you've, you're done. But you can also retrieve that object and manipulate each step. For instance, if you want to add additional information because it's a street you know, or because uh, you have some data that you want to override those route, routing di directions. So that's uh, a good way to go as well. Uh, that's something that we added recently that is really, really exciting because for the first time, developers will be able to make money with our products. 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Many of them are already making money. But this time it will be really easy. Uh, you can add, you, we used to have a, an Ajax library where you could add some local search on the map. It required a little bit, bit of coding. It was a little bit complicated, but you could add some, if you display the map of Moscow, you could look for a hotel and get a list of hotels. Uh, now we packaged everything in the Google bar. And the Google bar is just a, a very simple object. It's the one that you see here. So whenever I display a map, I just add the Google map, the Google bar and uh, enable it. And so what I have is that the user can type in any query and get local results for that viewport. And the nice thing is that you can link that Google bar to your AdSense account, which means that the Google bar results will include what we have as local search results, which are provided for free by everybody and, uh, and is free to provide to us. And uh, you can have ads displayed as well. And those ads, if the user clicks on it, then we share the revenue with you. So it's really a good way to monetize your website if it's getting famous, uh, because usually people doing search tend to click more on uh, search results that are really uh, matching their needs. So if you display a map and it's selected a location already and it has the possibility to enter a query, that means that you, we are in a very good position to provide him with relevant ads and he may click on the ad and bring you money. Another feature we added is the possibility for you as a developer on your mashup to add some uh, specific, what we call ad units, where for a given view of the map, we will propose some ads here that you will be able to display. And of course, if the user clicks on it, we share the revenue. So that's two ways to advertise on your map. Of course, you can activate, inactivate those uh, features on a uh, usage basis because you may not cover your whole map with ads because that doesn't make sense. But in some cases, in some use cases, you may, be, uh, fi you may find it interesting just to add that additional feature that will help the user and provide you with more money. Uh, we added something as well like the Wikipedia and the Panoramio layers. So those are layers that you can use and it, they will populate the full map with uh, pictures from Panoramio or articles from Wikipedia. So it looks like this. <laughs> you probably saw it already. It has been there for a while. The nice thing is that this, uh, this approach, which is not populating the map with place marks, but it's actually providing you with uh, customized tiles this approach will be uh, more and more um, available in the API. Uh, how many of you know the Street View service? Okay, so uh, Street View <laughs> service is an initiative of Google where we have cars uh, driving around the, the streets, taking pictures on three, 360 degrees. Uh, mapping everything, and then you can explore it uh, using the maps interface. Just quickly, if I go to Paris, yep. Here I am. So so we added recently something that is funny, it's the, what we call the waffle. So whenever you, you go somewhere, you can have a look, oops, and you have the user provided pictures there as well. So here for instance are all the pictures that have been taken that we have in Panoramio. I love that. Wow. So that's Street View, and Street View is available in the API. So unfortunately, Street View is not in Moscow yet, but if you have an international version of your website, then you will be able uh, to use that service as well in the API. So the way it works, you just have to populate a div the same way, and you, you s find a spot supported by Street View, and then you have that kind of thing appearing on your website. So you will have a more 
interesting demo on in the advanced session of some uh, local features of Street View, I would say. Uh, we just released a few months ago uh, uh, an early look for the JavaScript version 3 API. So this, this I will get into more details in the next session, but the idea is really that it has been redeveloped from scratch, that it's both for uh, desktop and mobile devices, and it's supposed to be uh, faster, especially to load the map, and uh, there are more and more uh, features available. And the Flash API, so uh, you can have the same look and feel uh, using Flash if you're more uh, comfortable with Flash. I won't get into too much details because we're running out of time. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can have any kind of features. And the thing I wanted to show you is here. We added a 3D Flash map, which is a Flash uh, extension where you can look at the map, but not the map like this, but like this. So let me show you. Oops. So where are you? Yeah, here we go. So that's a, a new way to look at a map like in the games we used to play when we were kids. <laughs> uh, and it's, well, it's Flash, so you can do any kind of stuff. You can turn the map around, you can add uh, many vector uh, graphics. So, yeah, feel free to play with it. On mobile, just to finish, <coughs> you have different options depending on the mobile device you want to talk to. If it's uh, an iPhone, an Android, or the latest Nokia's or Palm, then you have the JavaScript API, version 3, which has been optimized for mobile phones. On iPhone and Android, there is a specific, a specific library available to build applications using maps. And for the rest of the, um, the devices, then you can use the static maps API, which is just a way to draw a map, giving all the parameters in a URL. I will get into that in the second session, but it's really simple uh, to implement. <coughs> 